we closed school for about a week because so many kids were flying out of here on Red Cross planes and, and it was just bedlam. But they turned the school into a shelter and people could go there and sleep and eat. And the leg before grew, and we used to run the beach cars, and his wife cooked up there day after day, hour after hour, and spent food in the soup kitchen. And as soon as we got back to school, uh, one of the first things I had to do was to see what had happened to our enrollment. And I had so many kids that had left that I had to make up special withdrawal blanks. Then when they started coming back, I had to put up, make special re-entry blanks for them to come back. So we had a, I had this great uh, exodus of students during the 10 days of the, in the aftermath, you know. And then we had them coming back. And we were all, the teachers were wonderful. And we did have some special help, uh, some people from California who were clever with seismology and that sort of thing, he came and gave us some instructions, told us what to do. One day, and there was a terrible aftershock, and it shook the building so hard that I really thought it was over. And I remember that I ran so fast down the hall, I don't know how I did it, just to assess what was going on. And those teachers, every single teacher had those kids on the floor and doing what they were supposed to do. Marvelous the way the teachers handled it. And the kids trusted the teachers. The only kids that freaked out were in the high school. They'd run out of the room, the building screaming and carrying on. But the little kids followed the instructions. It was wonderful. We have lots of special instructions going out all the time to the parents, to the teachers, many emergency meetings of the teachers where we'd reconnoiter and say, well, this is what we have to do. And uh, it was it was hazardous going home from the school. The roads were all torn up and and muddy and miserable and and the, when you came down from my office down to the downtown area, there were big trucks afterwards. That reconstruction period running back and forth. I thought sure we'd have to get killed, but so we lucked out. Well, the earthquake at didn't do a whole lot of damage to the town. What, mm -hmm. what did the damage was a kind of yeah. So we, I think we were real lucky compared to other communities. Like, uh, well, Valdez actually disappeared. And it was on a big delta. And the delta kind of slid away. And the fact they relocated the town. Sewer the same thing. Um, Kodiak, we were on solid bedrock. So when it shook, we shook. But when it stopped, we stopped. One of the biggest damages from the tidal wave was was not the water so much, but was the all the boats and cars and cottonwood trees that were downtown mm -hmm. that were were being carried back and forth with the wave, and they were battering rams. You can imagine what, yeah. a, what one cottonwood could do, smashing back and forth against buildings. And remember, this was older Kodiak with a lot of stiff built buildings, so and a battering ram, a big cottonwood tree would probably do a fair amount of damage, kind of floating around town. And boats, are, like, you can imagine. 60 foot boats up there where, where uh, what's there now? Um, Tubbs of Tan is, or uh, the China House. Oh. Well, there was a big boat right up there, so you can imagine to get to get to that spot, it probably did a fair amount of damage. 